As I was going through the process of healing from my traumatic brain injury, I learned that the injury to my brain really had a profound impact on my sense of self. Now, as I said in the last video, I was in a car accident and sustained a traumatic brain injury as a result of that, but I really didn't have much treatment getting out of the hospital at first. I was actually going to be set up with some sort of a rehabilitation center, but I got in a car accident out of state. So when I explained this to them, they said, oh, well then follow up with your doctor. So I went with my doctor and the prescription I pretty much got was rest and here are some pain medication. And I, I was told that over you know a few months or so I would be pretty much fine. So I didn't think much of it. But as the week started to go on and I started to heal really quickly physically, I became increasingly aware that something was really, really wrong. There was a, a deeper thing than just the symptoms and just the, just the things I can sort of rattle off and, and explain to you. And, and I had a hard time grasping it right away. I started having this feeling like something deeper happened. I feel like a different person. I don't feel like myself, but I can remember all these things that happened in my life. It's not like I can't remember getting married and um, having my job and my identity. I, I remembered all of it, but it was like... It was like somebody else had done a bunch of those things. It was like somebody else had lived my life and made my choices. And I was a different person, even though I had the same memories. And so I came up with this this idea. And it's not even just... Idea doesn't exactly describe it. It was just this, this gut feeling. That's a better way to describe it. I got this gut feeling where it was like, maybe I had this like brain transplant, right? Maybe they didn't tell me because it's controversial and new and nobody's supposed to know about it. Maybe I had the surgery and then they tell everyone, shh, don't tell her because then she'll she'll reject the organ transplant of her brain, like how many can have organ transplant, like, like the brain transplant. And I came up with a sci-fi crazy, <laughs> crazy uh, idea, but I felt uh, kind of convinced, pretty convinced by it. Like, it felt like I just knew, I just knew something like that happened. But, I also knew that, um, brain transplants didn't happen. <laughs> I also knew that, that, that sounded really out there. But, at the same time, I had this, this gut feeling like, they're, they're not telling me something. So, I freaked out sometime around that time because I started panicking thinking that I was actually somebody else who was given false memories and and I was I was pacing around my house and at one point I grabbed the keys I was like I'm gonna leave I'm just gonna drive somewhere I don't know where I'm gonna drive I'm just gonna drive um, and luckily my husband heard me he was sleeping he, I woke him up with my pacing and my jiggling of the keys and whatever and he came downstairs and he's like what are you doing and I was like I've gotta go somewhere I just gotta go and he's like no 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 let's sit down let's talk what's going on are you okay um so he got me to calm down enough to talk to him and I started telling him not so much my full theory but pieces of it I basically said are you hiding anything from me is there something going on that you guys aren't telling me? Like, I won't be mad if you tell me what really happened. And I, I'm basically trying to coax the truth out of him. And he's like, no, no, nothing else happened that you don't know about. Luckily, I was able to believe him in that moment. I was able to say, okay, you're telling the truth. I believe you. But why do I feel this way? Why do I feel this... Like, within, underneath my skin, I just felt different. I, I felt like a different person. And then I started thinking about it. And I thought, you know, I did have a brain injury. I mean, yeah, it's not as drastic as, like, having massive brain surgery or a brain transplant or something. But I did get an injured brain, really. I, I, I did have parts of my brain smashed against my skull which knocked me unconscious for a certain amount of time and gave me retrograde amnesia where I couldn't remember a good section of my life. I mean that's it's pretty major. That's a pretty big deal actually. Wouldn't it make sense for a damaged brain to feel different? To work different? 
I thought about it and I was like, well, a lot of a lot of my functioning is about the same. Like I could communicate really well. I I could write and read and do a lot of the basic things and a lot of my personality traits were very similar. Um, but yet there were other things that I was having problems with that I didn't used to have problems with. And I thought about it and I'm like, if I'm having problems in all these other areas, it would make sense for me to to feel different. Even though I was working kind of from, from a handicapped brain, I was able to use reasoning and say, okay, this doesn't make sense. Did that make the feeling go away? No. No, I still felt that way. I still occasionally would ask Jim, are you sure that you're telling me the truth? Because even though log logic-wise and reasoning-wise I could say it made sense, the feeling was just so persuasive sometimes and it was something that I had to fight against this this feeling of being a different person but the fact that I knew cognitively that it wasn't some crazy thing where I actually was um, literally a different person really helped me so I learned two very important things going through this uh, the first thing I learned was that gut feeling that I was confused about for so long that sort of is it God is it Satan is it myself at this point, most everything I attributed to myself, almost everything. And I learned that that gut feeling that I had so come to rely on could sometimes make good decisions, but also could, it could be very wrong. And treating it like it had external knowledge outside of my own brain and self was, was not a wise thing to do treating that gut feeling like I could get greater uh, knowledge outside of anything I had access to. I didn't see that as wise anymore. And looking at it in the context of, of how I started the series and, and how I had believed so strongly that some guy was my future spouse and how wrong I had been, I realized that that was a good conclusion to come to because this was not the first time that my gut feeling had led me to make some kind of wild conclusion. And so balancing my sort of feelings and, and my intuition with reason, rationality, was really important. And that's, that's a lesson that I learned at this point. The second lesson that I learned was how much the sense of self lives within the brain. I always had this sense that there would be sort of this constant sense of self in some ways uh, for me. In fact, at one point in my life, I believed that I had been born again. Uh, that was something that my, my old denomination of Christianity really stressed. You know, once you, you spoke in tongues and were baptized, you were born again, and, and God made you a new creature. And Now I looked back at, at those ideas and, and the fact that I believed I was a new person that time, and I just... I couldn't take it seriously because I was like, I wasn't a new person. I felt different because I had an emotional experience, um, but born again after going through this, I would, I kind of wish that they used a different phrase, uh, really, because I understood what they were trying to, to portray by saying born again. I understood they were trying to portray like a spiritual rebirth, but I thought that I had had a spiritual rebirth. Genuinely, I thought that. I thought that it was this life-changing, huge thing. And now it just seems so small and superficial. I just felt like they had no idea. They had no idea what they were talking about. That's what I felt like. You don't even know what it's really like to be a different person on the inside. I understood that it was an analogy, but maybe some people took it too seriously. Maybe some people took it too literally. Maybe I was taking it too literally, I guess. And this didn't make me give up on theism or Christianity. You might think it would. Because I thought, you know, if there is a heaven, if there is a hell, God could regenerate people. God could regenerate uh, the brain, even with outside of substance. God could make like a intangible brain of you or something like that could reform you in heaven in some way even if if my body died and my brain died God could resurrect that 
That's how I looked at it. So it didn't completely make me give up on uh, Christianity and theism in general. But the traditional idea that like our souls are in us and our brain just kind of um, is the machinery surrounding that? No. No, I couldn't view it that way anymore after having that happen to me, after feeling that way, and after starting to read so much about other people who had been through through brain injuries themselves. No. not I couldn't look at it like that anymore. People are frightened by the idea that we're not constant, and I think it gives people comfort to think that even if something bad happens to them, that who they are in, in their essence will remain the same. And that just wasn't my experience. Yes, as I've healed, there is a much less of a disconnect from how I was before to how I am now. But there is still a little bit of change that I cannot explain to people. And I just had to accept it in a lot of ways and just adjust to it and adjust my life accordingly around it to make my new self, my new sense of self happy. I don't talk about it with people very often because of this discomfort they get, but it really happened.